Hello and welcome to your favourite teacher. So I'm just going to discuss Animal Farm Chapter 4. Um, and this really focuses on the Battle of the Cowshed, but also reveals the fear that's going um, that's going on with the with the humans, um, fear that this revolution might spread. So that's very similar to how com communism was feared um, and how people united against them. So um, Pilkington and Frederick, they're the two farm owners either side, um, and they supposedly represent the capitalist allies and fascist Germany. So both of these um, nations feared communism and because it was so different to to themselves but they still hated each other so it was like they couldn't couldn't work together now the pigeons are teaching the neighboring farms beasts of england and this is quite clever because this beast of england that we see in chapter one is really idealistic um and it's a great use of propaganda so by teaching it to the pigeons and then flying to the neighboring farms it's helping this message spread which again is how people spread their ideas now in popular culture in today's society. We use the media, so we use our own versions of these pigeons to send out our idealistic claims. Um, when it comes to the battle, um, Snowball really here demonstrates his cunning um, and his ability as a as a general it says that he studied caesar's campaigns and quote was in charge of the defensive operations and quote gave his orders quickly now um the humans keep on thinking that they've won but snowball has another trick up his sleeve and we keep on seeing this um the humans progressing forward and then meeting yet another line of defense so this planned attack could represent um the civil war in which trotsky so who snowball represents showed great bravery and in this instance the communists defeated the anti-communists just as snowball uh, well and the farm win against the humans there are some other revealing things with this Battle of the Cowshed, and one of those is um, Boxer's concern for the little boy. Well, not the little boy. Obviously, he was he was still fighting against them, so you know he was a casualty of war. But it, Boxer is really, really quite upset um, and wants to use as little force as possible, and certainly doesn't intend to kill anyone. Um, but Snowball sees this as a, um, as a casualty of war and claims the only good human being is a dead one. So we've got this opposition here between Boxer, who is idealistic and obviously wants to work hard to make Animal Farm a success. And we've seen that earlier on, but he doesn't agree with the use of violence um, and certainly won't agree with Napoleon's use of violence later on. Snowball and Boxer both get these first class medals and the dead sheep get the animal hero second class. Again, we're getting a pecking order, excuse the pun, but where we have animals that are supposedly better than other animals. And you've got to remember that the root of all of this is all animals are equal. And that stopped being the case. We've we've had our pigs. They are the cleverest. They are in charge. They already get the 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 extra milk. They get the apples. But we now have this case of medals establishing again an inequality that isn't supposed to be there. So chapter four is quite um, an action packed chapter. There's lots. So in terms of structure, there's um, lots of action. There's lots of um, it's kind of the blood and guts, so to speak, um, and a point where human victory seems really quite far removed because they've given this attack and they've been beaten by the animals again. So the animals, the the animal farm seems to be working well, um, even though it's perhaps quite far removed from the original dream, the original vision. Okay, uh, so hopefully that's helped you understand chapter four.
and uh, tune in for the readings of the rest of the book.